Uh, first of all, we've had really, we, we've kind of divided up, uh, you know, the off season. We just finished up what we called our team development segment. And now, obviously, we're starting uh, first official practice today, which we're calling our training camp, um, which will really go up until uh, we play the uh, inter squad game in, in Barnhill. And then we'll start getting ready, uh, you know, for the regular season. So it goes pretty quick, the off season, and here we are. Uh, with full 20-hour w- weeks to, to work with our student-athletes. And we've been really pleased with the buy-in, the effort, the energy, the enthusiasm that our guys have shown uh, up to this point. Now it starts to become a little bit of a grind. This training camp segment, uh, when you really don't play a game for an extended period of time, uh, mentally you got to have some toughness to get through because there's a lot of stuff that we have to uh, accomplish between now and, and our first game. Questions? Yeah, I guess what's the, the feeling that you have after the team development stuff? You know, we're, I mean, we're excited. I think that everybody in the country right now, um, from a college basketball standpoint, is excited. You know, it's it's first day of practice. And, um, you know, having said that, there's some areas we got to get better at. Um, you know, we got to continue to, as we look into the future, we got to continue with the improving our depth and and uh and then this year it's going to be really important uh as we've talked about you know a lot is just our our rebounding the basketball and and uh you know rim protection you know we're going to have to do it a little bit different than the normal uh rim protection type thing and and then we got to take care of the basketball we have not gone live much at all although everything we've done up to this point has been team stuff we didn't break it down to three or four man individual skill stuff we did all of our skill work as a group uh, but we do have to take care of the basketball and obviously um, some of those things that I've just talked about were areas of concern last year as well and, and they continue to be in areas of concern as, as we kind of look uh, for what we need to try to accomplish to the best we can in, in the minimal amount of time between now and opening night. You got a lot of newcomers but you got a lot of guys coming back to it, probably about half and half how do you feel like those guys have been matched so far? Yeah, I think that's a really good question. That's actually why, you know, a big part of why we went full team um, since we've been together. So we, we really, so we're, you know, we were in a four-hour segment basically the whole time I've been here, four hours per week. And uh, we've elected to use those four hours with, with our whole group um, rather than just guards for an hour and bigs for another, you know, we don't have any bigs, so I guess um, we'd kind of have to have all wings, so to speak. But um, I think they're getting, you know, from a player chemistry standpoint, they've been phenomenal. Um, off the floor, it seems like they've really gelled. We've done a ton of things together uh, off the basketball court, or not really between the lines where we've come together from a chemistry standpoint, not just the new players, but also our new coaching staff. So there's a lot of newness um, that we're trying to get to, uh, you know, to have familiarity with one another. But then on the floor, I think that that's really when this, you know, this segment, because now we're going to start going live a lot more than what we have. And so even though we've put in a lot of our defensive and offensive philosophies, a lot of that stuff has been non-contact. And so now, we're, you know, as you prepare for a season, you've got to have a lot of contact, and it's going to be physical, and it's going to be taxing both mentally and physically going forward from now until the, the week before our first game. What sort of things have you guys done off the court together? I need a whole other press conference for that. But, um, you know, we've had the team over to the house a lot. Um, every Friday uh, during the course of our summer segment, we did something outside the box uh, that was not basketball related, whether it was boxing, uh, yoga. Um, we train with the track team. I mean, we tried to do something at least once a week. Um, that's a little bit outside the box, um, you know, and I think that it, it kind of helps everybody get to know each other. And it, it's, it is, it's, you know, we're only playing 30 games. And, you know, obviously at the pro level you're playing 82 games and the guys are, are away from you in the summer, so to speak. But it's a long grind with only 30 games. And so I think you've got to kind of, um, you know, you've got to mix things up in practice so that there's, some excitement every day when you come in. It can't be the same monotony uh, things that you do both on the floor and off the floor.
Philosophy, I know, is probably not going to change the way you want to play, but have you had to schematically do some things with the lack of size? You know, have you had to kind of prepare for that? Yeah, I mean, because we haven't had to prepare for a team and, you know, we're going against ourselves, so it's hard to really see how small we are. Um, but I think as we start getting ready to play games, um, we'll, we'll certainly take on an identity of we'll have to change lineups maybe even uh, game by game. Uh, that might be something. It's not etched in stone. Um, but it might. this might not be a roster where we roll out the same five guys game after game after game. We might have to try to do some things based on who we're playing um, and trying to take advantage look at advantage, disadvantage type things on lineups and, and uh, starting lineups and then rotations as well. Now, who would you say have been the standouts um, you know, in the workouts and the conditioning and all that stuff? Yeah, I would, I would say for sure that um, you know Isaiah Joe has been the steadiest uh, day after day after day. Um, performance, attitude, everything. Um, you know, we had the players all vote um, for who worked the hardest, and we had three different categories, leadership, you know, working hard, and then who got in off hours and, and designated out the highest amongst his peers. That was not anything that, that myself or the coaches, that I had the guys vote on that. Um, so I'd say Desi had a really good off season as well, um, and then you know I think a lot of our new guys there's a, there's a, there's an excitement with them being on campus. There's an appreciation with them uh, being here. So um, you know I, I think it, those two guys in particular, one because of the steadiness of his of his approach since I've been here, and then uh, you know would have to talk about Desi just because of what his teammates thought of what happened this offseason with him. With Jimmy coming back, I know you weren't here the first time he was here. What have you have you talked to him about his experiences in the past here and then maybe what it's like for him to, to be back at Arkansas? Yeah, I know he's really excited. You know, I mean, obviously he had a lot of opportunities to, one, stay where he was, and two, once, once he hit the transfer portal, he had a lot of opportunity. He was hi highly sought after because of his ability to, to rebound at the guard spot. And you look at his wingspan defensively, and, and uh, Andy's a really quality young man as well. Um, I haven't really asked him about the past because it, it, you know, it really doesn't matter what his role was before or, uh, with any of the guys, Jimmy or any of them. I mean, we, we, you know, we're, we're going off what, uh, what we see and, and how they fit into our schemes and stuff. So, um, I mean, I, on his visit we talked a little bit about it, but not much. What a guy like Mason Jones. I saw some pictures of him the other day. He kind of looks slim and trim. Yeah, Mason's worked really, really hard on his body and, and watches what he eats. And uh, he's been a guy that, um, you know, if we practice at 2.30, if you walk in the building at 6.15 in the morning, there's a pretty good chance he's in here shooting, uh, you know, with one of the grad assistants. And, and uh, his work ethic early in the morning um, we had a little group that was kind of like the breakfast club before anybody got in the building. There was three or four or five guys a lot of times that were shooting at 6 in the morning. Um, and he was one of the guys that spearheaded that group. And, and um, you know, now with Mason, it's just about consistency on a daily basis. There's, there's practices that he uh, shoots the lights out and is phenomenal, and then he'll miss a couple shots, and we got to kind of bring him back to, to, to the, you know, to where he's got to get mentally. So, so we just, you know, one of the things that we're talking to Mason a lot about is, is just a consistency uh, in his approach on a daily basis. Who else was in the breakfast club with him? Isaiah shot a lot in the morning. Desi, uh, J5, uh, Scylla. Um, I think that's the group. You're obviously working on this season with the current roster. What are you looking at to add in, in November or in the late period in terms of you know, factors and how many? Yeah, I think that's a good question. I mean, uh, you know, the one thing that, that, that we don't want to do is we don't want to – you never know in recruiting, but we, we don't want to make a mistake. Um, you know, the fortunate thing – uh, and I talked to you know Hunter and John about it even on the interview. You know when you when you I had like four years where I sat back and really got to study, and then two years 
as an assistant and another so really you add another three years as an assistant and I thought that you know the one thing and uh, looking at rosters when you make a mistake recruiting it can really set you back and so we're going to be as sure as we possibly can obviously the younger a player is the more upside but yet also there's less body of work um, but but we have really really been recruiting this class really hard um, having said that in the 2020 class um, we as a staff we as a program um, and the players like we're, we're, we're a year behind um, where other people were and so we understand that and I, you know, I feel like our staff's made incredible strides uh, with the 20 class. What happens in November? What happens the early signing period, the late signing period? Have no idea where that goes. Uh, but certainly the effort and the energy that the staff has put in and uh, for most of our recruits, their openness to give us a chance uh, or a platform to try to let recruits know who we are, what our philosophy is, and I mean we're doing as as much as we can. I don't, I, you know, I, I mean I'm 54 years old, and I don't think my wife and and daughter like to go on Twitter and see me with a headband on and a and a knee brace and in a uniform. Like my wife doesn't really think that's cool. But right now, we have recruits across the country that are sending us pictures that they want to, hey, if I come on campus, can we do this? So we're trying to kind of create a niche and, and try to relate to, uh, you know, to 18-year-olds rather than 55-year-olds. How's a guy like Adrio been? What's, what's he kind of been like? I guess he's going to be kind of in a leadership role with the forwards group. Yeah, I mean, Adrio, the thing with, that Adrio gives us is, is, is a vibrant, he's got a personality. Uh, and he brings, he lightens the room every day with his smile and with his energy, and he's always upbeat, which is really important because, again, like not today, not tomorrow, but like next Wednesday and next third, like those are hard when you're going two hours, two hours, two hours. You know, it's, it's a hard grind, and there's no light at the end of the tunnel. Look, the coaches, the players, fans, everybody, the games are what, you know, what are, what's fun. Um, and that's what you put all this work in for is for, is for the games. And so um, he's a guy that kind of makes this time frame go a little bit quicker uh, because of his attitude. And, 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 you know, he can play the four. He's going to have to play some five for us this year. We've talked to him about that. That um, You know, and obviously I think, he, you know, in his mind he's kind of like a four, three or a three, four. And he's probably going to have to play those positions and play a lot more five than he probably has or ha- ever has in his life. How do you say the conditioning is with the guys? Phenomenal. And, you know, we, uh, we're not on the track today doing the mile run because everybody passed it. Um, I would say that we spent a, a lot of time on, on physical condition. And, um, you know, like we're going to have a lot of guys play a lot of minutes because of the depth. You know, we're not going to go – I'm not playing 11 guys because I don't have 11 guys eligible on the roster. So – you know, we're probably going to have a rotation of, of seven or eight guys. And so those seven guys got to really be in great physical condition. And we talked about, you know, the physical condition that our past teams have had. Um, and then, you know, you hope that you're in great condition and that, knock on wood, alleviates minor injuries going forward if you're in great shape. I think sometimes injuries happen when you're not in great physical condition. Do you guys have like a mild trial on a certain day? And did, did different guys, based on their size, have to hit a certain time? Yes, and yep. Yeah, so the, so the guards were 530, um, the wings were 540, and then the bigs were 550. So who all qualified as a big? I guess Connor and Reggie? Yeah, those two were the only two that were considered fives. Okay. Now, Connor did not pass, which... When you're seven foot four, you're probably not going to be able to run a mile. So he's the only guy um, that I've ever given a pass to um, because of his body frame, and we don't want his back. And um, but everybody else did pass. Yeah, did it, so everybody ran it like um, the same we ran it as a team in the morning, usually at six in the morning, um, and then once you passed, you were out. Some guys would rerun it with their teammates to try to get them 
to pass. So some guys, actually the coolest thing was one of our last times, we had four different guys time it up where they each ran one lap to try to set the pace to get the other guys to finish and pass. And it was really cool. I've never, I've been doing the mile run for I don't know how long, dating all the way back to when I was coaching Sacramento Kings. And I've never had a group ever do that where four teammates that had passed kind of set the bar for what the, what the guys that were trying to make their mile time. It was pretty cool. Do you remember who the, the four guys were that did that? I can get with Mike later or something. Yeah, I'm not sure. I know it was Isaiah and Isaiah Desi might have been Mason. And Adrio, if I had to guess right now. We'll get it to you. Okay. I'll check with money. Has Reggie Cheney embraced that uh, five role? I hope so. <laughs> I mean, we're going to have to play that, you know, by committee. And, um, you know, Reggie's going to have to play some, and Adrio's going to have to play some, and Silla's probably played the, the three, four his whole life, and he's going to have to play some when we play small ball. And, Mason's going to move to the four against certain teams, and he's a two-three. So, um, you know, we've done this in the in the past when we've had a roster that you know that you, that you haven't had a lot of time to try to formulate, and and um, so we'll we'll do the best we can figuring out. But we're looking forward to the challenge and uh, with great excitement. How unique is it to have a roster without any freshmen on it, even though there's a lot of new guys and new faces coming in? What's the question? How unique is it to have a roster without a freshman on it, even though there's you know a lot of transfers, a lot of new faces? In? Yeah, I mean, we got so many sophomores. We're still young, um, you know, which which I think that you know guys like Silla and Jimmy Witt, I think those guys can help us and Adrio, um, and you know the makeup of college basketball is, you know, just with the transfer market and stuff. There's there's a lot of a lot of really good freshmen that aren't finding their way to power fives right now um, just because of that fact. But um, it's not a surprise when, you know, when you get the job this late that, the, that, there's, that there's not a freshman as part of our program right now. Because, again, we, we weren't going to just take a guy uh, late that we didn't feel was good. We exhausted all options and, and uh, just didn't feel there was anybody that, that could contribute. You mentioned Jalen Harris being part of that breakfast club. How much do you think that's improved his uh, jump shot this offseason? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it, you know, with, with, with shooting, you know, is mental too. You know, it's not just – he's been getting in reps. He looks really good in, in uh, shooting the ball on his own, and I feel like his confidence is growing. And, um, you know, having said that now, you know, I think any time with any upperclassman it comes down, it, you know, it's whether you're – in a baseball hitter or you get in grooves and you get in slumps and and um you know i think with 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 j5 it's really just you know getting him into a game and him knocking down a couple threes and then what we see behind closed doors uh you know hopefully hopefully he'll shoot the ball at a much higher rate this year you, you mentioned connor is it any update on no 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 nothing at all we're just kind of waiting I mean, it was 7-3. Is he, is he up to 7-4? Maybe 7-3. Maybe I exaggerate a little yeah. bit. I'll take it away. You mentioned your recruiting niche. Did you anticipate that your style would get this much national attention as it has on social media? Uh, yes and no. You, you know, at Nevada, we did a lot of off-the-wall, outside-the-box stuff that generated a lot of uh, national uh, stuff and that that actually kind of helped us in recruiting tremendously and and um, so we're trying to do different stuff here. I'd never done the recruiting pictures like that. It just kind of happened. Um, one one time I did something and then somebody said it looked like an NBA scene and then that triggered a, a thought and I mean the weird thing is I was at the football game the other day and two students came up to me and asked if they could. One of the kids had a scene of. Uh, Jordan and and uh, Kobe Garden and he said, "Hey, will you guard me?" And I was like, "Well, there's 60,000 people at football game. Like, where, where are we going to do this?" Um, so I took him up and we did it in the hallway. But um, so it's you know it's it's kind of cool and unique and different. And you know the great thing about coaching college athletics is is you can do some stuff like that. I don't think in the NBA I'd be posing with pictures 
with any of any of the NBA guys I coached. Ron Artest probably hit me in the face. Yeah, they, they showed you on the big board. Were you sitting on the stand someplace? Yeah. You weren't in a fancy schmancy stand. No, R- Riley's got great seats. They're front row seats right behind. It's awesome. Was that on the east side or the west side? Right behind uh, Arkansas's, Arkansas's bench. bench. Yeah. Okay. You mentioned having to play catch up. I mean, how much have you guys as a staff had to play catch up in recruiting and, and just all the places you've been? You know, trying to Trying to play catch. Yeah, you know, I just think that, uh, you know, most relationships are started with players like at the beginning of their junior year, kind of. Um, and some even before that, obviously, if it's a really good player and you can identify that player early on. Um, you know, one of the guys that we signed at Nevada it started when he was a freshman, and, and there's guys we're recruiting now that maybe West Coast that I'd, you know, been recruiting at a, at a really young age. But so, so really we've kind of lost with this 20 class. We've lost that junior year, so to speak. Um, but we're getting guys that want to visit that are high-level guys. And, and um, you know, so I feel like we've, we've done a really good job, and only time will tell, you know, how it ends up. Players, but a lot of them have commented about the presentation you guys have had and, and the, how you see them fitting in. I mean, how much work has gone into that, and how beneficial do you think that's been for you guys in building those relationships, having that? Yeah, I don't think it's necessarily, uh, you know, like prep, preparation or presentation with 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 the recruits. I mean, uh, when Hunter, you know told me that they'd like to interview me like like I prepared like that, you know, like like you're supposed to. And, and uh, you know, when a recruit comes on campus, you have to prepare. Um, and, you know, when we do practice, you know, we spend hours preparing for practice. And and so I think, you know, anything you do, it's, you got to be really detailed. And obviously our recruits have, have, uh, have you know, have commented on that. And, and um you know, we take it really seriously. Like, we don't just think they're coming on campus just to, you know, have a good time. And, you know, like, they're trying to make a decision that's kind of life-altering. And so we have to prepare like it's a, a big-time, lifetime decision for a young person. That's clear. What are you doing, kind of fitting in as a student? What's, what's your thoughts on getting enough? I can't say enough about Khalil. I mean, he's, he's at everything. Like, we have... 6 a.m. waits. He's sitting there with his teammates watching, and he never misses a practice. He's never, he has, he's he's early for stuff. Uh, he's a big part of our team, man. Like, he really is. Cause uh, even though he's not suiting up, like guys feed off him and they respect him, and I respect the heck out of him. And he's he's a big, he's a big part of 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 our basketball family for sure. Is he a good conduit for you from the staff to the, the to the players? Because he's he's not playing, but he's still kind of one of the guys. I, I, yeah, he's definitely one of the guys, um, and I do think that he kind of gets where we're coming from. I really do, and and um, I'll talk to him underneath the basket or on the baseline sometimes about you know, hey, let's get this guy going a little bit harder, or let's get this guy focused a little bit more, and um, hopefully that that relationship will continue to evolve and get even stronger and stronger where he has more of a voice like a coach. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, you guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, man.